prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this Thursday morning giving thanks to Almighty God for the blessings that he will bestow upon us as we anticipate this new day, as we ask for his grace in our lives. Today we also celebrate uh, continuing the 24th uh, week in ordinary time. We also join with St. Robert Bellarmine and uh, the intercession that he gives by clear teaching and doctrine and leading us to understand the mystery of faith, the mystery of Almighty God himself that allows us to understand the great mystery of our sinful lives, lives that are made of sacrifice, lives that are offered unto us to be united with Almighty God Himself. And so how will God be at work in us today as we seek perfect union with Him, which is called heaven? And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sins of this week. We were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the Bishop St. Robert Bellarmine with wonderful teaching and virtue to vindicate the faith of your church, grant through his intercession that in the integrity of that same faith, your people may always find joy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the law be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Certain Pharisee invited Jesus to die with him. And he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee, bringing on a last pastor flask of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, hair, kissed them and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man was a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owned 500 days' wages and the other owned 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave his for both. Which of them you love him more. Simon said in reply, The one I spoke, whose larger debt was forgiven, he said to him, You have just rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with almond. So I tell you, her many sins has been forgiven. Hence, she has so great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Good morning, brother and sister in Christ. Like the Father Peter just said in the morning, we are on continuing on the 24 week ordinary time. And I tell you the truth, I'm not taking a look at the gospel today until I reach here. So I said, oh, so long. <laughs> but when I read that, and it reminds me of the gospel last Sunday, we hear the two stories similar. If you remember, recall the last Sunday, the, after Peter asked how many times we forgive and Jesus give a symbol, the one slave come in the master had 10,000 owned and he cannot pay back so that the master forgive him everything. And he went out and he see his friend own him only 100 and he put his friend in jail. So that the story like that, I hope you remember. So the story today, Jesus again tell with the Simon, the one to own 500 and the one to own 100. The purpose here, on of this week, 24 Sunday, uh, 24 week ordinary, the church called us to return to God and receive forgiveness. 
but not only for ourselves. But when we receive forgiveness from God, we need to forgive our neighbor, our brothers and our sisters. Because if you remember, recall again Sunday, the first reading said, we prayer and our prayer were accepted and we were forgiven by God, how must depend how we forgive our neighbor, our brothers, our sisters. And even we come here every day when we celebrate the Mass, we pray our Father. If you remember, in one sentence in our Father, forgive us as our forgive our someone trespassing. So our prayer is powerful. And God gives us the grace and the power of God to forgive someone. So we human beings, we only hear that the error is human. But the forgiveness of the divine, that's true. Because no one in the gospel today, people question, who is this guy can forgive? But today, God gives each of us the power of himself to forgive our brothers and our sisters. So I repeat, the more we forgive our brothers and our sisters doing wrong for us, the more we receive forgive from God. So that forgiveness is the medicine to side effect. Not only forgive the one were forgiven to be spoon to liberty, but ourselves to release and feed them and get be spoon. Say it's easy, but act is not easy. But I will give you two examples so you can apply that because the one to this that is human being like us, not far away. If you remember, 39 years ago, in May 13, 1981, so I mentioned that day, so some of you may know. May 13, 1981, Bob John Bon II was assassinated in St. Peter's Square. You know, remember that? And after 10 hour operation, he get back. The first thing he asked, where is the one assassinate me? And tell him that I forgive him. The first thing when he recovered, he said, I forgive him, the one who assassinated me, the one who wants to get my life. And not done that, after he done, he went on to the jail in Portugal to visit him. And he asked the government, I forgive him. And not done for that, he tried to help his mother to go another country to visit her son in the jail. And he said, I always pray for you. I forgive you. You see that even the one want to get his life, to assassinate him, but he still forget and forgive him. We had a Saint Maria Goresti, 12 years old, he stepped to death by she want to protect her virginity to God. And before he died, he said the one to stop him, I forgive you. I forgive you. Even I did. So you think that human being, we don't have a power to do that. But the race of God, we can do that. So ask God to give us strength and the race to do that. And when the story happened to me, all of you know that I just ordained a month ago. After I ordained 10 days, I still in my vacation, technically like that. I live in Newman Center with Father Gary. And one day I received a call from the lady. He said, Father, he needs, he look, I'm looking for the father to visit my farm, father. I mean, I'm looking for the priest to visit my father in the hospital. And I sit there with Father Gary, and Father Gary said, Oh, that is good. The last test for you, so you can do. So because now you are a priest, you can hear confession, you do anointing of the seat. I said, I will die. So I asked the lady, so where is your father now? And 
today I'm busy, but how about tomorrow? What time tomorrow is available? I can come to visit your fa father and your family. And she told me, about 9 or 10, is okay. I said, okay, so I can try to go there before 9. And I asked her a little bit, and she said that because her family has four children, she is the elder one, and another sister and two boys, so two boys and two girls in the family. And I asked a little bit, Chad, and she told me that, Father, if you can help my younger brother, because my younger brother do something with my father about many years ago, and he come back and he asked forgiveness. But my father said, I forgive you, but I don't want to see you, you are not my son. I don't want to see you. Uh, so now it's my young brother one really want to reconcile with my father, but my father is still holding her, her, his heart. He don't want to reconcile. He said he forgive, but he, he's not my son, and he don't want to see my young brother. He said, I will die. So next day I come to the hospital. Before I enter the room, I saw the young man sick in front of the room, crying and crying and crying. And I asked, who are you? He said, I am the youngest son of the man lying in the bed there. But he don't want to see me. I said, okay, I will try. Pray with me. I will try. So I entered the room and I talked with the man and the sister, I mean her eldest daughter, a little bit. And after that, I asked him, sir, do you want to hear confession? I offer, i available for you, sir. And a little, and he said, yes. We got long time, he did not confess. And I asked the daughter to go out of the room because for the seal of confession. And I listened for him confessing. It's not a big deal. But after he confessed, I keep silent a little bit. And he reminded me, Father, I'm done with my confession. Now I said, God tell me, he forgive everything, everything you condemn, you, you, you make, but he don't want to see you. He forgive you, your sin, but he don't want to see you. Even if symbol is not good, today you die, he don't want to see you. The man is confused. Confused, said, what do you mean? I said, yeah, God told me to tell you. He forgive your sin. But he don't want to tell you, uh, don't want to see you. So even though today you're dead, where you go, it's up to you. He don't want to see. Remember, God in heaven, and he don't want to, tell, to see you, so that means you're not in heaven. So the man thinks, so where I go? I said, I don't know. If the end of this life, only two ways, up in heaven and down, so, but God do not want to see you. And he said, so what can I do? I said, like you did with your son. You forgive him, but you not accept him that your son, and you don't want to see him. And now God told me to tell you that. He forgive your sin, all of your sin he forgive. But he don't want to tell you. Because what you did to your son, God will do the same to you. And I silent a little bit, and he's silent, and I see the tear in his eye. So he said, now it's your choice. And he told me, call him in. So the young brother come, and family reconcile. I'm too happy, and I said, if thank to God. It's not my, but God work on that. So I want to tell you that, all of us have power to forgiveness. The reason we want to hold that in our hearts is because we don't want to get God to use our power, to use our hand and our mind, our body to forgive someone. Remember, we are only instrument for God. So that everything we do and we did only for God's love and God's grace. So be generous with our brother and sister, and be grateful to God. Remember, St. Paul said that everything, faith, hope, and charity 
is ending in heaven, only one to present is love. So that to love God is love our neighbor. And love our neighbor is generous to them because we are sinful. We were forgiven by God so that we generous and faithful to forgive our brother and sister. Remember, no matter how big, sinful we are, God forgive to our brother and sister too. So pray for God and ask God for this grace in this week to strengthen our faith and give us strength and yield fully this instrument for gift to someone. Amen. As instruments of God's will, and endowed with the great power to love, to forgive, indeed to care for our brothers and sisters, we raise these our prayers and petitions. For the church, may Christ the Good Shepherd lead all lost sheep back to the fold. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders across the globe, may their hearts be swayed by God's law to respect life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose loved ones have suffered from the effects of the global pandemic, may God console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students in our faith community, may the Holy Spirit enlighten them in the truth and give them joy in their studies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have recently died, may they enjoy eternal life through the mercy of our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way today, we remember Paul Kennedy on his 23rd anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, those that we've been asked to pray for, and those that we lift up from the depths of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Good and gracious God, you exercise your power to heal as you allow us to exercise the power to forgive. And so help us by our words and our actions in answer to all of these prayers, to ever be mindful of your power in us, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread to our world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Bob, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen on our sleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her most proud, and with the blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you to all the ages, we may go air to We may marry to, to be co heir to eternal life, and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Did you get that? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on me. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ see the tomb of the Holy Spirit see the tomb of the Holy Spirit the body of Christ Amen. the body of Christ body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
The chalice of blessing that we bless is a communion in the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a sharing in the body of the Lord. Pastor, which is food of the Lord, may be blessed and pray to your heart, that what has been given to us in time may be again for eternity. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and hearts so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, join me in giving thanks to Father Sin for his presence here with us today and being able to remind us of the great power of Almighty God that is at work in us as we forgive and call each other to forgiveness and life in him. So thank you, Father Sin, for being with us, and thank you to each of you for your faithful witness each and every day and for the very power of God's grace at work in your life, in our families, in our communities, through your very love, your life, your very will. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.